So let's focus on a graphical representation of the diff in diff. So diff in diff graphical representation. And again, I'm only focusing on the simplest possible model that I covered in the other in the other parts. So here's the main thing. Here I'm going to write a post treatment variable. This post treatment variable is just going to have either a zero or a one. This is going to be my output variable, whatever that outcome variable or output variable, whatever you want to call that variable. Let me just take this very quickly so we don't forget that this is the model of interest. So we don't forget that. We'll keep that in the back of our mind. What will happen now is I'm going to be able to, in this graph, show everything that I need. So imagine that the non-treated group is in red. Okay? So this is in red, not, not treated. And I look at how this group evolves over time. Okay, maybe it looks like this. Okay. I look at the treated group in blue. Treated. And let's say that the treated group, let's say I'm treating a lot of people, actually. I'm treating four people. So I'm going to have four variables in there, okay? And then I'm look, I look at these four people later on. They look something like this, perhaps. Okay. So if you think about this data, I can dissect this data into some nice shapes. This group of people here. What do I know about this group of people here? Is that what's true about these people is that the treatment is equal to zero. They're not getting any treatment, right? What do I know about this group of people? I know that treatment is equal to 1. Okay, what do I know about this group of people here? What do I know about that group of people over there? I know that post is equal to 1. This is, this is all variables that are happening after the treatment. The treatment has already happened. Let's assume that the treatment happened somewhere in between, right? Well, I know that the treatment has already happened there. It, it's telling me from that equation over there. I could do a similar thing here. And I could say that this is simply where post is equal to zero. How many dissections do I have of that? Four dissections, four subgroups. I should be able to talk about all those four subgroups, okay? What's the identifying assumption in the model? The identifying assumption is this. Look, how do I find, and let's go now to the estimated model. So I put hats on top of this, hat, 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 hat. If I'm looking at the estimated model, I delete the error term because it's the estimated model. Where will beta 0 be? Well, beta 0 is simply the average of the y for the non-treated group prior to the treatment. The average of the non-treated group prior to the treatment is here. This height here is going to be beta 0 hat. What is beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat? If you revisit the lecture, the video tutorial on the dummy variables, you'll be able to follow this. But beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat is simply the average of the treated group prior to treatment. So I look at these four, four dots here, I look at this group here. What's the average? The average is maybe somewhere here. I draw a line here and I say, ah, uh -huh, this height here is simply beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat. Agree? The difference between these two lines is going to be my, this difference here is going to be my beta 1 hat. The systematic differences between these two groups. Okay. Now, 
What's my identifying assumption? My identifying assumption is that this difference between the group would have persisted in the absence of the treatment. So what I could do is I could take this, copy it, paste it here, and what I would put it, I would put it right in the average of the non-treated group. So the average of the non-treated group, which is this height right here, um, let's see if I can do a better job of this, this height right here is the average of the non-treated group after treatment. So this will be beta 0 hat plus beta 1 hat. Sorry, beta 1 is not there because they're not treated. But it's post, so it's going to be beta 2 hat. Okay. What about the average of this final group here? Remember we had four subgroups, so we have an average of this four people here. Okay, let me do it with a different color, so I'm running a bit out of colors. Um, let's say that this height here now is simply beta 1 hat plus beta 2 hat plus beta 3 hat, and I forgot the beta 0 hat. Okay, so look. The difference between these two, if the parallel trend assumption holds, I know that the graph has become a little bit uh, heavy, but if the difference were to hold, remember I took this beta 1 and I transposed it in gray, I should have expected, if the parallel trend assumption is valid, in the absence of treatment, this should have been the average outcome, if the parallel trend holds. So average, average outcome in the absence of treatment. What was the actual average outcome? Well, the actual average outcome was this ball here. So what should be this difference between these two? Let me do a line between them. This thing here is the main the main guy, and the main guy is the beta 3 hat. Remember, the tallest, this height here, from here to here, this height here was beta 0 plus beta beta 2. Okay. Um, so that was the, the height that we were looking for, and that gives you hopefully a very good picture of how the difference in difference estimator works in a graph. I'll stop here and take any questions.